morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, August 15th. And we'll have Sarah Spivey in just a second. But first, we are following breaking news right now. Information is limited. But here's what we know so far. Two people are dead and three more are in the hospital after a man open fired at a bar on the city's east side. Right now, what you're looking at is a live picture. We have a crew on the scene. This is a live video of what we are seeing right now. Now, the calls for shots fired came in around 3.30 this morning. Now, we're told there was a fight at the Boom Boom Sports Bar. This is the 1600 block of South New Braunfels Avenue. Uh, police say after that fight, the suspect opened fire. Police say there are two people dead and two people have been taken to Bamsey. Again, this is information just coming into our studios, but we did hear from SAPD public information officer on the scene. Take a listen to what investigators say. It appears that a, a fight happened inside of the location. Um, as uh, the fight spilled over outside, gunshots were heard. Uh, multiple victims uh, shot all adults age. Um, two were deceased here at scene. Three have been transported to a, a local hospital in critical condition. Again, two dead, three in critical condition. Officer Schuler added that this is an active investigation. They are still gathering more evidence, but this time they have not identified a suspect yet. Officer Schuler added that they are still working to figure out what exactly led to the fight and the subsequent gunfire. But again, no arrests have yet been made. So we are going to keep our crew out on the scene. Any information that comes out, we will relay it to you once it becomes updated. That's right. All right. Well, now let's check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah Spivey, yesterday, hot. Yeah, hot for us and humid too. We saw a high temperature of 96 and while there were a couple of pop up showers uh, today, we're going to have a better chance to see scattered rain around the metro area, but we have to wait until the afternoon outside right now. You can see that it is uh, mostly cloudy 78 degrees. Generally temperatures this morning are in the upper 70s. Now something to keep in mind is that again, most of the morning here will be fairly quiet even around lunch, only a 20% chance for some uh, showers so isolated around lunch but in the afternoon scattered showers and storms from about 3 p.m. all the way into sunset sunset happens right at around 8 14 this evening and even later in the evening just a few isolated showers it will not rain everywhere uh, but coming up in the forecast I'll talk about if you do receive rain what you can expect in just a few minutes east northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour all that forecast soon Sarah Max Thank you, Sarah. New data from the Texas Department of State Health Services show that Bear County has the fourth highest COVID-19 case count in the state. Health officials reporting over 21,000 new COVID-19 cases statewide. In total, there are 2.8 million cases since the start of the pandemic. State health officials say that number is expected to increase as the Delta variant spreads rapidly. Here in Bear County, the positivity rate is 21.4% this week. That's up from the start of July when the rate cited at 5.8 percent and the COVID situation in Dallas County worsening day by day area hospitals in Dallas reaching full capacity. The Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins says currently there are no beds available for children in the ICU. Now, the County Judge Jenkins says, quote, if your ch child is in a car wreck, if your child has congenital heart defect or needs anything that will require an ICU bed or more likely if they have COVID and need an ICU bed, we don't have one, end quote. Now, the judge adds there hasn't been a bed in the ICU available for children for at least 24 hours. And with the rise in COVID-19 cases in San Antonio, some people who have been infected with the virus in the past may be under the impression that antibodies will protect them against the Delta variant. However, University Health Director of Hospital Epidemiology, Dr. Jason Bowling, says antibodies from a previous infection will not protect you against the Delta variant. He says, quote, people have had prior infection, unfortunately, are not protected against this new Delta variant, which is causing the number of cases we're seeing now, end quote. And if you want to get your COVID shot, there is a vaccine clinic starting today. It's happening at the Islamic Academy of San Antonio. That is 8638 Fairhaven. It starts at 2 p.m. and it goes to 5 p.m. Now, this clinic will be open every every day until Saturday, the 21st. The vaccines available will be the Pfizer vaccine. In your morning headlines, according to the CDC, new hospital admissions for COVID-19 for people in their 30s have reached a record rate. The previous record high rate among people between the ages of 30 and 39 was set in early January 
with two hospital admissions for every group of 100,000 people in their 30s. This week, the figure jumped to 2.5 hospital admissions per 100,000. Now to the latest in Afghanistan, where the Taliban have taken numerous cities in just the last couple of weeks and now have reportedly entered the capital city of Kabul. Now, Taliban fighters entered the outskirts of the Afghan capital, said they are now awaiting a quote-unquote peaceful transfer of the city after promising not to take it by force. But panicked residents there racing to leave the city with workers fleeing government offices, helicopters landing at the U.S. Embassy, the Taliban seizing nearly all of Afghanistan in just over a week, despite the hundreds of billions of dollars spent by the United States and NATO over nearly 20 years to build up Afghan security forces. Well, people with ties to the Afghanistan government g gathering outside the White House pleading to President Joe Biden to step in and help. The protest happened hours after President Biden authorized an additional thousand U.S. troops for deployment to Afghanistan. Protesters say, quote, we want Mr. President to hear and to act immediately. We want him to act now because Afghanistan is in a tragedy and we want him to stop the Taliban, end quote. Well, a deadly and powerful earthquake that we told you about first here on GMSA yesterday, devastating Haiti, killing more than 300 people, injuring at least 1,800 more, and flattening homes and businesses there. The disaster adding to the misery in the tiny Caribbean nation, still reeling from the assassination of the president last month. ABC and Christine Sloan has a story. The U.S. now sending help to Haiti after a powerful 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit the country Saturday morning. A series of aftershocks followed. The tremors felt as far away as Cuba and Jamaica. The U.S. Geological Survey says the epicenter was 78 miles west of Port-au-Prince. Images from the town of Lecai, a coastal town in the south, showed a church badly damaged, a crack running through the center. In the town of Jeremy, not far from the epicenter, center, rubble covers the streets. People seen using heavy machinery to clear it. The disaster follows last month's assassination of President Jovenel Moïse, the country's new prime minister, Ariel Henry, declaring a state of emergency. Government officials, relief agencies and representatives from the United Nations are assessing the damage. And U.S. aid is now deploying a team to Haiti to help with recovery. President Biden also naming U.S. aid administrator Samantha Power to coordinate the effort. There are concerns Haiti could be facing the same level of devastating destruction seen after an earthquake shattered the country 11 years ago, killing more than 200,000. This earthquake is larger than that earthquake in 2010. It's about two times more energetic than that magnitude 7 earthquake. The impacts on both human life and infrastructure in Haiti are likely to be very devastating. And now Haiti is facing the threat of another natural disaster as Tropical Storm Grace heads towards the island. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, happening today, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hosting a blood drive. They say they need at least 600 donations a day to rebuild their blood supply. The blood drive is happening at Santico's Entertainment in Cibolo from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. To make an appointment, just call that number right there on your screen, 210-731-5590, or visit that website also on your screen, SouthTexasBlood.org. Time now, 6.08, 77 degrees out. Well, you made it this far. Now you and your child need to survive the transition to college. Still ahead, we have the ultimate guide. And take a look. Amazing views captured more than 250 miles above the earth. We're going to explain next. So beautiful. 77 degrees at 6.09 this morning. Sarah Spivey says there might be some scattered showers in our area. She'll explain when we come back. Some amazing views captured a little more than 250 miles above Earth. A time lapse showing the southern lights or Aurora, Australia's from space. Hold on, just take a look. Here we go. All right, images of the phenomena taken over the Indian Ocean. They were shared by astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Oh, it's beautiful. The colorful display is caused by strong solar winds hitting the Earth's magnetic shield. Weather question. Uh -oh. Pop quiz. Okay, uh -oh. ready. What season is it right now in the southern hemisphere? It is winter. There you go. Woo! Nice. <laughs> Thinking of my toes this morning. Glad you guys. 
Nice. I can remember that. Okay. I just figured the opposite. It's, it's straight up summer here for us in San Antonio. It's too much summer. Uh, yeah, but we do have a shot at some rain today, guys. So let's take a look at the forecast for the day. Outside right now, it is mostly cloudy and 78. Winds are calm at the moment, but we're actually going to have a welcome wind from the east northeast today. And that is because we've got some outflow boundaries to our north. We'll talk about that in a bit. 82 right now to start off the day in Del Rio, 77 in Catula. 73 in Kerrville and 74 in New Braunfels. Now the first part of the day here is going to be very similar to yesterday. Hot and humid and fairly dry as well. We're not really going to see our rain chance work its way into the forecast until this afternoon. Let's go ahead and look at some of those outflow boundaries right now. You can see some rain just south of San Angelo working its way through San Angelo, approaching parts of Kimball County, uh, and this is going to generate outflow boundaries and we're going to see some rain develop further on down to the south uh, throughout the afternoon today. So let me take you through the future cast. Here's a look at the future cast right at about noon, a 20% chance for some ice isolated rain, but then as we head into the afternoon hours, a 40 to 50% chance for scattered showers and storms. They will be very scattered in nature, all right? So not everyone is going to see rain today, but there is a chance for everyone to see rain today. And if you do happen to get a shower or a storm, know that it could produce some gusty winds, but not severe weather, but some gusty winds are possible. Heavy downpours are possible where the rain sets up. That could lead to some minor issues on streets. And then finally, claps of thunder, a few flashes of lightning are possible too. Again, unfortunately, not everybody is going to see rain. I can't promise rain for everyone today, but there is that chance, 40 to 50% chance. With the loss of daytime heating after the sunset at around 815, we'll see our rain chance come to an end for the day. But even if you do not see rain, today. Temperatures are going to be a couple of degrees cooler than yesterday because of rain cooled air in the surrounding areas. So our high temperature around San Antonio actually expected to be in the low 90s today. Uh, mid 90s up near New Braunfels, however, upper 80s potentially for parts of the hill country like Rock Springs and Lakey. And then just shy of 100 degrees out toward Del Rio. Not as good of a chance for rain in Del Rio, more, ch more likely a 20 to 30 percent chance in Val Verde County today for rainfall. But again, here in San Antonio, here's what the forecast is going to look like at noon. Still only a 20 percent chance, 88 degrees, and then a 40 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. Uh, now that's both a 40 percent chance, meaning 40 percent of our area will get rain and 60 percent will not. So so again, keep in mind that that rain is going to be scattered in nature, a high temperature in the low 90s, and we'll have east northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then with the loss of daytime heating, our rain chances will temporarily come to an end for the day. But watch what happens tomorrow as well. We'll be waking up quiet 75 degrees, but then in the afternoon as well, remaining outflow boundaries will fire off a few showers and storms. Chance for rain tomorrow also 40%. So 40% today. 40% tomorrow and then looking ahead to the week, it'll be more isolated in nature and it'll be hard to see any rain by the week's end. Now we've really got to talk about the tropics. There is the remnants of Fred, which is expected to strengthen back into a tropical storm and impact the Florida panhandle by early Tuesday morning. But tropical storm Grace, which is expected to move over uh, Haiti, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico today, Haiti at the early part of next week, moving over Cuba by the middle of next week and back out into to the Gulf of Mexico by the end of the week. Now past that, it's unknown. It could impact any areas all the way from Mexico up into Florida. So we're going to keep an eye on Grace and give you an update as to where Grace is headed. It's not out of the realm of possibility that it could impact the Texas coast. So we'll keep you updated and informed. Just know that today the most pressing weather is that there's a chance for some scattered storms this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon as well. Max and Sarah. All right. I also love the, the book and the apple for first day of school. Yeah. There's Bobby. Thank you so much. 617, 77 degrees out. Are you a coffee lover? Yes. Do you <laughs> love something if you need it to survive? Yes. Well, next on GMSA, we explain the reasons behind the high prices. Speaking of high prices, if you've been shopping for a car, you might have noticed it's challenging. It's tough, especially if you're looking at used vehicles because of this worldwide chip shortage. But don't worry, next on GMSA, we have some suggestions on where to look if you want to buy.
morning and welcome back. Shopping for a used car, truck, or SUV has become more and more challenging because this worldwide shortage of a Central parts. Ursula Perry has some suggestions on where to look if you're in the market for a used vehicle. The auto industry has had to cut production of new vehicles due to global computer chip shortage. But if you still need to get into a used car, you're first going to want to decide which models you're interested in. Then focus on which give you a good combination of features, quality, and price. Start with new car dealers. They generally have vehicles just a few years old for sale. And dealerships will often sell vehicles that still have an original or extended warranty in place. And don't forget to look at those auto superstores like CarMax and Carvana. You could do the whole process online and have your vehicle delivered right to you. There are also many independent used car dealers. Make sure you're getting the best financing deal there, though. And you can find cars for sale online from websites like Facebook, Marketplace, or Craigslist. But keep in mind, when shopping for a vehicle, prices can vary substantially. Prices can be based on anything from mileage and condition of the vehicle to the options and even the geographic location of your car. Ursula Perry case at 12 news time now 622 77 degrees out have you ever wished your car could expand when needing more space to stretch your legs no i've never even thought about I wish that you could just like maybe take off next we tell you about a concept car audi is working on in your morning consumer news audi is working on a concept for a new self-driving car that changes size to allow for more room to stretch when the driver wants to relax. Okay, it's called the Sky Sphere, and when the all-electric concept car is in driving mode, it's a sports car. Lower to the ground, it has a 10-inch shorter base length, but when the car's computer takes over driving, the car expands in size, lets the driver stretch out, even take a nap. It's like the Batmobile. I tell you, in that really process, good. the steering wheel, the brake, and gas pedals all fold away. This is just a concept and mm -hmm. can't actually drive itself yet, so, Audi engineers say they are not sure the car could actually be made to pass crash tests. Huh. Mm. Well, aerospace giant Boeing says its Starliner capsule is headed back to the factory after last week's delayed launch. No word on when the next attempt will be, but Boeing says it told NASA it needs to do, quote, deeper level troubleshooting, end quote, on propulsion system valves that caused the delay. They say they have to fix the valve issue before setting a new launch date. Boeing Starliner is designed to eventually carry NASA ast astronauts to the International Space Station. All right, now to the latest on coffee prices. That morning cup of coffee could cost you more. The New York Times reporting that the price of coffee beans skyrocketing. It is up almost 44% this year. Extreme weather in Brazil, supply chain issues, and political unrest in Colombia are all to blame. As of now, it hasn't affected Starbucks or Nestle, but if prices remain high long enough, they will have to consider raising prices. You know, I thrive off of the free coffee here at Queso. I'm still... You bring I, your own. Oh, I bring my own. Smart. That's how you save money. All right, 627, 77 degrees out. Well, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is now speaking out for the first time since he announced his resignation. We have the details on what he had to say about the accusations against him. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, Sunday, August 15th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. A lot to get to, but first, did you make it outside yesterday? I kind of hibernated again yesterday. Smart. It's good. You stayed in the AC. You mm -hmm. avoided the heat. Mm -hmm. I'm really scared to see my AC bill. <laughs> it's been, I've been having to crank it a lot lately, Sarah, because it's been, it's been hot. Would you like an, uh, an AC tip? Mm. Yes. Okay, you might not like this one, Sarah. <laughs> the key is to keep the thermostat within 20 degrees of the outside temperature. If it's more than 20 degrees cooler than the outside temperature, it's going to be consistently running. And so if you have a high of 96, that means it needs to be 76. Oh, I keep it at 76. You keep it during at the day. During All the right. Day. Well, there you go. At, at least 76. You could push it and make it a little warmer if you wanted. But who wants that? OK, let's take a look outside. We are getting some beautiful color here to start the day. Nice, mostly cloudy skies at the moment, but a beautiful sunrise about to be on the horizon there. 78 degrees outside. Winds are calm at the moment. We already have a heat index. It feels like 81 outside. It's 73 at Bulverde, 72 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 72 in Tarpley, 72 in Hondo. In Uvalde uh, this morning, it's 72 degrees, 75 in New Braunfels and 73 in Seguin.
So we do have storm chances today. In the afternoon, we'll see a 40% to 50% chance for scattered showers and storms. And we're already starting to see some rain on the radar. We'll talk about that coming up in the forecast. So scattered rain this afternoon and tomorrow back to school for a lot of uh, kids. Uh, and so I'll have a look at your back to school forecast and we'll take a check in the tropics. It looks like things are starting to heat up a bit and even tropical storm Grace could make its way into the Gulf uh, by the end of this upcoming week. So a lot to talk about in the tropics, your back to school forecast. But first, this afternoon's rain chance coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. And we continue to follow that breaking news. Two people are dead, three more in the hospital after police tell us a fight ended with a suspect opening fire at a bar on the east side. That's right. We heard from the SAPD public information officer and Chief William McManus this morning. Of the people shot, two are women, three men. We're told all between the ages of 20 and 30 years old. Now, here's what we know right now. It all happened in the 1600 block of South New Braunfels Avenue around 3.30 this morning. Police also they say they have not identified a suspect yet and no arrests have been made. We do have a crew on the scene. And we'll bring you the latest updates as they become available. Well, a young father and street pastor was remembered during a special tribute at his northeast side apartment complex. 22-year-old Troy Demetrius Lee died from multiple stab wounds back in June. San Antonio police say they found his body near a bus stop in front of his complex, which is the Hilltop Oaks Apartments. During the tribute, people shared his love for God and his passion for impacting others. He and his girlfriend, Lindell Baptiste, have a six-year-old child, and she is pregnant with another baby that is due in the near future. She says she has peace knowing he is still with them. He's, he's still here in our hearts, and we may not have him here physically, but he's still here spiritually. San Antonio police put a Crime Stoppers out for the suspects still at large. If you have any information, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. Well, back to school event held in honor of a six-year-old who was shot and killed on Mother's Day during a car meet. Soraya Perez is the organization. Soraya Liana Blessings Nonprofit held the back to school event at the People's House Church on Hamilton Street. Their families enjoyed food, music, a bounce house, even a mechanical bowl. Volunteers giving out free haircuts and there were at least 600 backpacks filled with supplies. Also, a note made out to other children as they enter the school year. I love each and every one of y'all sincerely. Your guardian angel, Soraya. And these words are words that will hit anybody. As you can tell, it always hits me. Always hits me. Soraya's grandmother hopes her organization raises awareness about gun violence against children. Andrew Elizondo, the man arrested in the case, facing a felony murder charge, facing up to 99 years to life in prison. In your morning headlines, outgoing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo now speaking out for the first time since he announced his resignation. Cuomo, who is leaving office in just a matter of days, remaining defiant. Here's ABC's Phil Lepof. He has a story. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo speaking out for the first time since announcing his resignation. In an interview with New York Magazine, Cuomo saying, I'm not a martyr, and I feel like I did the right thing. I did the right thing for the state. It's a stunning fall from grace after a state attorney general's report found sexual harassment allegations against him credible. But even during his resignation announcement, Cuomo maintained that in his mind, he never crossed the line. I have been too familiar with people. My sense of humor can be insensitive and off-putting. I do hug and kiss people casually, women and men. I have done it all my life. And with New York lawmakers announcing they will suspend the impeachment investigation into the governor due to his resignation, Cuomo, who is just days left in office, tells the magazine he would win an impeachment case and he would have made the state legislature look like a ship of fools. The assembly speaker says, this evidence we believe could likely have resulted in articles of impeachment had he not resigned. And that was ABC's Philippo reporting. Also in New York, more than 50 people injured when a tour bus rolled over en route from Hudson Valley to Niagara Falls. They were taken to th three different central New York hospitals. New York state troopers say there was a mix of injuries from minor to serious. Investigators say the bus was the only vehicle involved in the accident and aren't sure yet what caused it to tip over.
the San Antonio City budget is in and it reaches $3.1 billion. This is the first time in San Antonio's history that the budget has exceeded that $3 billion mark. There are a lot of questions like what did the planning for the budget look like? How big an impact did COVID have on that planning process? So this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh joins us live. We know you probably have a lot of questions and you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us at 8 a.m. See what the City Manager has to say. Well, kids at several school districts are getting ready to go back to school this week. Here's a list of the schools that are starting classes tomorrow. Alamo Heights ISD, East Central ISD, Harlandale ISD, Judson ISD, August 16th, and then Northeast East Side ISD, South Side are all starting classes tomorrow. On KSAT.com, we have a full list of the districts that are starting the rest of the week. Just visit our website. And if you have any questions about what are the COVID-19 protocols your school district is following this year? We also have an article online dedicated to that. It is all laid out by district. Just visit ksat.com. And shameless plug, because tomorrow morning, both of us are going to be out and about at uh, respective school districts. You're going to be out at Northeast ISD. Mm -hmm. At Serna Elementary School, mm -hmm. right off of 410. There you go. I'll be out at Southside ISD. We're going to be breaking down everything you need to know to start the, the new year in the best fashion you can. <laughs> there you go. All right, 638, 77 degrees out. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? We're going to be hearing from head coach Mike McCarthy. You don't like it when the quarterback goes down like that. Mm -mm. We're going to tell you what to expect this com coming season. Taco Bell is planning on launching a new drive through facility. We have the story next. It's really cool. It have you looks see, have like you something seen it? out of the, like in the future. There are there's so many articles about it because it really is just like that. We're going to explain what makes it so cool in just a few moments. But right now, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 77 now, what can we expect for the rest of the day? And that work week and that back to school week for so many kids. Sarah Spivey's back in just a couple minutes. Good morning and welcome back. So through this pandemic, a lot of people have turned to drive through mobile, obviously curbside ordering. It's an easy way to maintain that social distancing. Well, now Taco Bell officials announcing a new drive through only concept called Taco Bell Defy. That's right. So it will include three lanes for mobile or delivery order pickups and a fourth lane for those wanting to place an order at the restaurant. Customers will scan their order using a QR code at one of the digital check in screens. Then they pull up to pick up window where their food is delivered by a lift system. I feel bad for my father trying to figure this out. <laughs> so and that's the thing. So the kitchen will be located above the drive through lanes. Customers will interact with employees using a two way audio and video system. So there's really no human interaction. And I was reading an article about it yesterday. They're supposed to speed up each person, each customer by about 12 seconds. And apparently that expedites process makes it go by so much faster. We'll see. There you go. Okay. Well, HEB 2021 Quest for Texas Best is on with 20 finalists from all over the Lone Star State competing for the title of Texas Best. So the Quest for Texas Best contest actually began in 2014. Competitors submitting their product that they think is worthy of being the best in the state. So over 1,200 products ranging from food and beverages to home goods and beauty items were submitted for this year's competition. The grand prize, $25,000, and HEB will actually put your product on their store shelves. Well, the 20 contestants will present their products for final judging on August 25th and August 26th at I, the San Antonio Food Bank. A, mm. I am going to submit Sarah Acosta's salsa. Nice. Really? Wasn't that, that good? good. The quest for the best. Did you try it? I ate it yesterday. Okay. How much of I that made big jar did you eat? A quarter of it. I mean, it, you can just dump it on your food. I made migas <laughs> and just the salsa kept coming. And if I was still hungry, I had chips and salsa. So Spice, one to ten. How spicy? Uh, it Honestly, spicy. it's a two. Okay. Yeah, it's it was not very all that mild. spicy. Okay. That's why you can eat a lot of it. Fair. But... You said you had spicier salsa in the world. I do. That, that, that batch was not as spicy. I'm trying to guess the secret ingredients, and Sarah is not giving me anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep on guessing. <laughs> All right. We have had a cool-ish summer. Quote it's unquote. still been hot, okay? But, you know, when you look at uh, how, how many days we've had at or below average, it really is impressive. Anywhere you see a yellow or a blue square on the calendar days for July and August, that was a day at or below average. We have had 40 days at or below average. And honestly, this past week has been the hottest week for us uh, so far this summer. Now, 
40 days. That's impressive. That's about 88% of summer uh, in July and August. That has been cooler than seasonally average. And today we have a shot of doing that as well because there is some rain chances in the forecast for the day today, mainly in the afternoon, about a 50, 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and storms in the area this afternoon. Uh, so between the hours of about, I would say 2 p.m. to 9 p.m., scattered showers and storms will be on the radar around the San Antonio metro area, a little bit earlier than that for the hill country. And I'll show you the radar in just a second here. 72 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 72 in Hondo, 78 cents in and 75 in New Braunfels, so it is a warm and muggy day. It's not raining anywhere around San Antonio or the KSAT 12 viewing area just yet. It's already 82 in Del Rio. Del Rio, unfortunately, Valverde County, you have a little bit less chance for rain today, but still there, about 20 to 30 percent. So a wider view, let's go ahead and see where the rain is right now. It's currently working its way through San Angelo and it's just starting to push into Kimball County here just to the north of Junction. Now as we get some daytime heating, these are going to generate outflow boundaries and we're going to see scattered showers and storms across the hill country pretty much uh, near lunch and then around San Antonio after lunch. So let me take you through that high res future cast. Again, this is a look at lunchtime. You can see some uh, isolated to scattered showers and storms becomes a little bit more numerous in the afternoon, 40 to 50% chance there. Uh, and then as we lose that daytime heating after the sun sets at 815, we'll see our chance for rain come to an end for the day. But even if you don't get any rain, we're still going to see afternoon high temperatures a few degrees cooler than the last few days. Uh, we'll be looking at high temperatures in the low 90s. Uh, but tomorrow for back to school, Alamo Heights, East Central I ISD, Harlandale ISD, Judson ISD, any ISD and Southside ISD all starting school tomorrow. We're going to have a chance for scattered rain in the afternoon as well. So you get an A in the morning with muggy temperatures and some clouds and then scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. All right, tracking the tropics. We've got a couple of things to talk about. The remnants of Fred, it fell apart over Cuba, uh, but we're actually going to see it strengthen here in the Gulf of Mexico back into tropical storm strength and make landfall sometime along the panhandle of Florida uh, early Tuesday morning before falling apart across the Appalachians. But here in San Antonio, I want us to pay attention to Tropical Storm Grace. Now, Tropical Storm Grace is going to be making landfall near Puerto Rico, where we have Tropical Storm Warnings and Tropical Storm Watches for the Dominican Republic and Haiti. As Tropical Storm Grace moves across those areas uh, early tomorrow and throughout the day on Tuesday, moving across Cuba on Wednesday, and then out into the open Gulf of Mexico, by the end of the week after that, it's a little bit of a mystery where it's going to go. It could end up all the way in Mexico or it could end up in Florida. So we're going to keep an eye on Tropical Storm Grace. For now, know that we're going to have scattered showers and storms this afternoon. You could hear a few claps of lightning, see some heavy rain and some gusty winds, but no severe weather is expected. And then tomorrow, scattered showers and storms in the afternoon as well. Let's hope for some rain in August to be nice to add into the rain gauges and keep our uh, you know, coolish summer going. I'm down for the coolish. 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 You're coolish. I'm coolish. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> 648, 77. Hard on the ish. A little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, college is a major transition for kids and their parents. Next on GMSA, how you can prepare your high school graduate for this life change. Well, college is a major transition for teens and their parents. Many moms and dads worry about their teenagers, that they aren't ready or don't have the skills to succeed. So how can you prepare your high school graduate for those life changes? David Sears has a story. And it's just really nice because it's small printed. And Sherry Morgan has a daughter headed to college this fall and a son close behind. It's a transition that's triggered mixed emotions. I'm scared. I'm sad, but I'm excited. I'm mostly excited. Sherry has spent the last couple of years preparing her kids for independence. Giving them control early on was necessary. Really letting them think through what they want versus what you think they should do. Making sure they know how to perform basic chores like how to do their laundry. Money management is also important. Set up a bank account for your student and help them create a budget. Also, be upfront about the family's financial situation and what you can and cannot afford. Discuss ways to stay safe on campus and talk about how often you expect them to check in. Give advice, but don't overwhelm them. Remember that you just don't represent yourself. You represent 
your family. Remember, your child will more than likely make mistakes. I think that's my biggest thing is I want my kids to live. I want them to experience things. I want them to learn. I want them to fall down. I want them to get up. Experts say it's also important to consider your child's mental health. According to one source, 62% of all college students reported feeling overwhelming anxiety over the past year. So make sure your student knows to get help if they need it. David Sears, KZ 12 News. Pro football coverage. Powered Ooh, by we are Walker. in the middle of preseason football. Head coach Mike McCarthy, though, not really chanting because he's not really happy with the way the Cowboys have been practicing this week. And in some ways, he's not happy with how they showed up Friday night's 19 to 16 loss to the Arizona Cardinals. It is preseason, so the loss really doesn't mean much, except for what you see between the lines. Now, Dallas's three quarterbacks combined to complete only 20 passes, only 215 yards between the three of them. While well, the defense allowed Arizona to rack up 168 rushing yards. To make matters worse, the injury bug hitting hard, starting defensive tackle Neville Gallimore leaving the game. We now know is a dislocated elbow. He's going to be out four to six weeks, but even with all that in mind, there were positive signs. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and to be honest, this new look defense certainly won't be either. So far, it's, it's going well. We're starting to get a feel for everything, get a feel for the defense, the scheme. Uh, we call it uh, system expertise, and we're working on it, and, and we're building on that. We're maturing, I, I think I would say. Um, you know, we have a lot of new faces in there, so, I mean, this is what we need. You know, we need, we need, we need training camp. We need just to continue to work. Um, this wasn't our best week, you know, leading into this game, so uh, we need to come out of this. We just got to rally get healthy and we need to have a better week of practice going into Houston. Go. Been watching some of the practices with uh, Hard Knocks. They're the team we spotlight. Have you seen Hard it's Knocks? It's fantastic. It's so Love my guy Micah Parsons. Shout out Penn State. So Cowboys next up hosting the Texans Saturday 7 p.m. Another preseason. Speaking of the Texans and preseason, they taking on the Packers last night and I got to tell you they won in a huge fashion 26 to 7. A lot of questions with the team. We're going to break it down in the next hour. But we can break down right now. San Antonio Spurs Summer League. That's right. We're in the summer. We're still playing. They're taking on the Nets today at 5 p.m. A big shout out to Trey Jones of the Spurs. He is, I believe, at second right now in all Summer League players in scoring. So go, go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Bright future, 655, 77 degrees now. We'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, two people dead, three more in the hospital after police tell us a fight ended with a suspect opening fire at a bar on the city's east side. Now we heard from SAPD Public Information Officer and Chief McManus this morning, and we know this all happened around 3.30 this morning. Five people shot, two are women, three men, all between the ages of 20 and 30 years old. Now we know that this happened in the bar in the 1600 block of South New Braunfels Avenue. Police also not yet identifying a suspect. No arrests have been made yet. Today will not be a washout, but we do have a good chance for rain, especially in the afternoon. About a 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. You know, when I tell people it's going to rain in the summer, I don't really hear very many people complaining. So I'm here. For I know it. that it's it's on the last day of summer for a lot of kids. So if you want to have outdoor activities, I'd say get them in this morning or shortly after sunset, as long as it's before bedtime, of course. And now tomorrow we'll have a 40 percent chance for scattered showers and storms as well. A lot of folks heading back to school tomorrow. Just know that uh, when you drop them off, it should be nice and dry. But when you pick them up, there will be some scattered showers and storms in the area. Isolated on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then most of next week will simply be hot, humid, and seasonal seasonable with high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s. That rain is also a great way to like if you need to go to bed to settle down. It calms mm -hmm. you down. There you go. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We have a lot to talk about at 8 a.m. We have leading SA, the city manager breaking down the budget, talking about how the pandemic has affected our local economy. And of course, we're going to have the latest on that shooting at the bar on the east side. We have a crew in route. They're going to have a live presence there. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We are at Westfall and South New Braunfels on the city's east side where five people were shot overnight. Two fatally, three in critical condition as the search for a suspect is now four hours underway. 
Plus, San Antonio's $3.1 billion per dollar proposed budget is out, and the city manager joins us live for leading essay to break down what went into planning and the changes we could all see. And taking a live look out at San Antonio, 77 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What will the rest of the day, what will the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday, August 15th. Thank you so much for joining us. Just moments ago, you gave me the nice compliment. You asked me, did I get some sun? Yeah, you look a little tan. A little bit. I did walk around the complex yesterday. Had to soak in the sun, but I only did one lap because it was so okay, hot. Okay, so you got tan in one lap. <laughs> it was that hot, that much sun out there. It Sarah was, Spivey. and you know, I had I wore the big hat yesterday. The, I was outside for just a hot second, and it was <laughs> too hot. hot. It was too Literally hot. Literally a hot second. Yeah, it was very warm yesterday. In fact, though, temperatures were actually, high temperatures was a degree cooler than what is average. We saw a high High temperature of 96 yesterday. Average high this time of year is 97, but it's the humidity that gets you. That heat index value is anywhere from 100 to 105 yesterday. Now, outside right now, a beautiful start to the day. 79 degrees, a little muggy. It already feels like it's 82. Uh, and temperatures generally are in the 70s. It's 73 in Seguin, 75 in Hondo, 74 in Bandera, 72 in Kerrville, and 78 in Canyon Lake. But I'm watching very carefully. We've got some showers and storms to the north of us and near San Angelo. Uh, there's actually some flash flood warnings uh, for uh, Tom Green County area there. But here in San Antonio, this is going to be our rain chance for the day today. It's slowly pushing to the south, almost into Kimball County. We won't really see a significant chance for rain in the metro area until this afternoon, a little bit earlier in the hill country. Uh, but here's a look at today's forecast. Cast. Most of the morning will be quiet into the afternoon, a 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. Now, it will not rain everywhere. I wish I could say today was a day that everyone would get rain, uh, but where it does rain, there will be some heavy downpours, perhaps even some gusty winds and some claps of thunder, but no severe weather is anticipated today. Of course, we'll be keeping you up to date here. I'll show you the future cast in just a few minutes, but high temperatures today as a result of some rain cool day are going to be a couple degrees cooler than yesterday. Still a warm day with highs in the low 90s. A lot to unpack in the forecast, including a check of the tropics. Our eyes are going to be on Tropical Storm Grace by the end of this upcoming week. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Sarah? Thank you, Sarah. Well, two people are dead. Three are in critical condition after a shooting early this morning at an east side sports bar. That's right. This happening at South New Braunfels in Westfall, right next to I-10, just before 3.30 this morning. Our Dylan Collier joining us live from the scene with what we've learned so far. Dylan? Good morning. San Antonio police described this as a fight that started inside the bar and then spilled out into the parking lot with deadly consequences. Bags in bags of evidence still being uh, brought out of this establishment uh, and have been brought out over the last few hours. Uh, we have a large crowd of people all also gathered about a block away from the scene, and we've heard, unfortunately, loud sobs off and on over the past hour and a half or so. The body of one of the victims who was found in a grassy area outside the bar was removed by the the medical examiner's office less than an hour ago. Police are looking for a suspect, but he is so far not in custody. And like I said, we're still gathering witnesses, gathering information, just to try to see what may have led to uh, this very, very uh, tragic evening today. And we will provide an update on any suspect that is taken into custody, as well as a condition of those three remaining victims who are all in critical condition, just as soon as we get that information. Reporting live on the east side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. Well, a man trying to change his tire to gas station on the city's south side last night was carjacked and then killed. All this according to SAPD. Now, police saying the 65-year-old man was changing his tire in the parking lot of a Texaco on Petit Jordanton Freeway and Viorette just before 11 p.m. That's when investigators say 36-year-old Jose Gonzalez walked up to him and stole his truck. Then the suspect ran over the victim and the truck with the truck and killed him. Now, the suspect then lost control of the truck that he stole, crashed into the store, Oh, police also tell us the man began to pull money out of the register. That's when two responding police officers confronted the suspect. 
Now, that suspect actually attacked both responding officers. They were finally able to apprehend him, taking him into custody. Those officers treated on the scene. They didn't have to go to the hospital. As for the suspect, Jose Gonzalez, taken to downtown Baptist for minor injuries. He now faces charges of murder and two counts of assault on a peace officer. The identity of the victim, that 65-year-old man who was hit and killed, has not yet been released. Now the latest involving the coronavirus new data from the Texas Department of State Health Services shows that Bear County has the fourth highest COVID-19 case count in the state. Health officials reporting over 21,000 new cases statewide. In total, there are 2.8 million cases since the start of the pandemic. State health officials say that number is expected to increase as the Delta variant spreads rapidly. Here in Bear County, the positivity rate stands at 21.4%. And there are a number of COVID vaccine clinics popping up in and around San Antonio. Today, you can get vaccinated at the Islamic Academy of San Antonio. That is at 8638 Fairhaven. The clinic will be administering the Pfizer shot starting at 2 p.m. going until 5 p.m. And if you can't make it today, don't worry. There are several other vaccine clinics happening all week until Saturday, August 21st. You can find a full list of those locations and times right now. Just head to KSAT.com. For some students in San Antonio and the surrounding areas, tomorrow will be their first time in a physical classroom since the spring of 2020. Specifically, students attending Alamo Heights ISD, East Central ISD, Harlandale ISD, Judson ISD, Northeast ISD, and Southside ISD. We want to remind parents that most of the schools are returning for in-person learning. As for mass guidelines, that has been left up to the districts to decide. You can find out the most up-to-date information available about yours right now on KSAT.com. And speaking about headed back to the classroom, both city and statewide local colleges and universities, they are ready for those students return for the school year. But with this Delta variant continuing to surge, a lot of schools mandating masks, some requiring COVID tests, among other main health guidelines. Right now, KSAT.com, we have the current plans listed for several universities and colleges. We are going to be continuously updating that list as more information becomes available. And parents, families out there, if you haven't taken the kid out for a new haircut for the first day of school, the 619 Barbershop doing it for free. A community event happening today, 10 a.m. to noon. It is 1429 West Hildebrand, Suite 103. In addition to haircuts, they're also going to be giving you away backpacks and free barbecue plates while supplies last. So all those families, all those kiddos out there, if you haven't gotten back to the classroom, good first day. Yeah. And you, a fresh haircut gives you a lot of confidence on that first day. Always. All right, time now, 808, 78 degrees now. Well, just ahead on GMSA, a fictional video game that is the backdrop for the movie Free Guy. We're hearing from the gamer influencers among its cast. Plus two Tejano leaders banned from Mexico for treason. We'll tell you why in the latest part of today's Tejano Moment series. And a man makes a dangerous climb to bring attention to climate change. We'll have a look at the nerve-wracking video. That's next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 78 degrees out there right now. This morning, we are talking the city's $3.1 billion budget. City manager is going to be joining us live for today's Leading SA in just a few minutes. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Are you afraid of heights? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I, I did not know that. I don't. I, I've done live shots in the, in the air and mm. I regret them instantly. I've seen you on that roller coaster. Yeah. All right. Well, one solo free climber, George King Thompson, not afraid of heights. The 21 year old has scaled another London Tower a few months after being arrested for reaching the top of London's iconic shard. And this week he climbed the 23 story Unix Tower in Stratford, East London without ropes. Check it out. So his feature came days after doing the neighboring stratosphere tower, but he admitted it was fraught with danger. He said, quote, I can train all I like, but there's always that little bit of percentage, little bit of percentage of a chance that I could die, end quote. King Thompson said he wants to highlight awareness of climate change through his climbs. Hmm. So it's by you afraid of heights? Yes. I wouldn't do that. that Are those just, actual ladders on the building? I, I think that's just part of the building. I don't think you're supposed to climb those. I don't really recommend it. There's a um, Nat Geo documentary, Free Solo, mm. you know, where he's climbing El Capitan without 
any kind of ropes or anything, my hands literally start sweating. I'm, yeah, no, mine aren't right now. <laughs> <laughs> that movie. Okay, let's take a look outside with uh, live cam. A beautiful start to the day. Wonderful look at the sunshine there. It is mo mo mostly cloudy. We've got a good amount of low-level clouds and high-level clouds out there. The high-level clouds are from some storms to our north. We'll talk about that in just a bit. For now, it's 79 degrees, and we've got generally calm wind conditions out there. 77 in New Braunfels, 75 in Hondo, 81 in Del Rio, 72 in Rock Springs, 78 in Catula, and 78 in LaGrange. But as you can see, just to our north, there are some showers and storms affecting areas of San Angelo right now. In fact, areas south of San Angelo are under a flash flood warning from some heavy rain that has fallen in those areas. And as you can see, this uh, broken line of thunderstorms is pushing to the south. Now, it's pushing to the south pretty slowly, and we're really not going to see effects in San Antonio from this until this afternoon. But the Hill Country, probably any time between about uh, after 10 in the morning, that's when there's a chance for some scattered showers and storms for Fredericksburg, Kerrville, and Rock Springs. But around San Antonio, again, it should be isolated at noon and becoming more scattered in nature in the afternoon. Chance for rain in your backyard today, 40 to 50 percent chance. And Again, it will not rain everywhere, unfortunately, but where it does rain, there could be some gusty winds, all right, but not severe. Maybe a gusty winds of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour, as well as a few claps of lightning and some heavy rainfall in spots. Uh, so we'll keep you updated there. Now, once we lose the daytime heating, sun sets at 815 tonight. We'll uh, see our rain chance for the day come to an end. But we're probably going to see some more rain in the area tomorrow afternoon. And even if you do not get rain, we are going to see rain cool there in the metro area today. Now, it is still going to be a hot day. High temperatures in the low 90s, but a few degrees cooler than yesterday. And if you do get a shower, temperatures could drop down into the 70s and 80s. High temperatures likely in the 80s, though, up in Rock Springs and Lakey today. All right, here's a look at today's forecast. Just to reiterate everything I just said, around noon, 20% chance. In the afternoon, 40 to 50% chance for scattered showers and storms. We are actually going to have an east-northeast wind today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, a northeast wind is fairly rare in the summertime for us here in San Antonio. And then again, the sun will set at 814 and we're going to see our rain chances come to an end for the day. We'll start tomorrow at 75 degrees, but watch as uh, the high res future cast is also showing more scattered activity tomorrow afternoon along some outflow boundaries from uh, any storms that develop today. So again, tomorrow in the afternoon, another shot at rain, although the chance for rain is just not quite as high as it is today. Rain chances, as I mentioned, 50% today, 40% tomorrow, only isolated on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then as we close out the week, we're just going to be hot and humid, not really a significant chance for rain. I want to talk about the tropics for a bit. First of all, Fred has restrengthened into a tropical storm with wind sustained at 40 miles per hour. It's expected to make landfall somewhere along the Florida panhandle, and those areas are under a, a tropical storm watch at the moment. And it'll make landfall overnight Monday into Tuesday morning before falling apart across the Appalachian Mountains. However, here in San Antonio and across the state of Texas, I really want us to pay attention to tropical storm grace. It is uh, currently experiencing winds of 40 miles per hour as well. Uh, Puerto Rico and parts of the Dominican Republic are under tropical storm warnings. It's expected to move across Hispaniola uh, sometime tomorrow and into Tuesday. Uh, hopefully missing that area of Haiti that received that 7.2 magnitude uh, earthquake, then moving over parts of Cuba by the middle of the week and then re-entering into the Gulf of Mexico. It'll enter actually into the Gulf of Mexico by the end of this upcoming work week. Then we have to watch it carefully because it could either fall apart or it could re-strengthen and move anywhere from uh, Mexico, making landfall anywhere from Mexico all the way up to Florida. So a lot of uncertainty with Tropical Storm Fred by the end of this upcoming weekend. So we'll, uh, pardon me, Tropical Storm Grace by the end of this upcoming weekend. But we'll keep you updated. For now, the most immediate uh, cause for attention is the chance for scattered showers and storms this afternoon. We'll keep you updated on air, online, and on our KSAT Weather Authority app. Max and Sarah. Patiently waiting for that rain. Sarah's Pavi. Thank you so much. 817, 78 degrees out. Well, Dr. Anthony Fauci says the Delta variant is putting more children in the hospital. Still ahead, a look at the activities your family can avoid to lower the risk of your young child contracting COVID-19.
And coming up after the break, we are hearing from the cast of Ryan Reynolds' latest movie, Free Guy. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, six, nine, fireball zero, daily four, two, five, seven, nine, fireball nine. And your, do you already do cash five? No. Oh, okay, you're up, I'll do you're cash up. five. Six, 11, 12, 13, 16, Lotto, Texas, 7, 11, 21, 36, 52, 54. And Powerball, 6, 21, 49, 65, 67, Powerball, 18, Power Play 2. Did you win? No. Did you even play? Yes, I did. Uh, all right, before we head to the break, special birthday. My dad, David. Happy birthday, Dad. You're my hero. Those are pics of him driving with me to, you see Union Pacific in the background on the right, or I guess on the left of your screen. That is North Platte, Nebraska, and then he drove from Nebraska all the way here to San Antonio, Texas. That is the first bite of San Antonio barbecue I've ever had. So thanks, Dad. Always being by my side. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Massey. Good morning, welcome back. Ryan Reynolds' new movie takes place in a fictional video game world, but counts some very real gamer influences among its cast. CNN's Rick Damagello reports. Guys, I have to tell you something. There is no easy way to say this. This world, it's a video game. I really want to kiss you, is that weird? Listen to me, you're not real. Welcome to Free City, a fictional video game that is the backdrop for the movie Free Guy. There were very much two bullseyes that I worked very hard to hit. And one was for the gaming viewer, and the other, equally important, was for the non-gamer audience member, feeling that it was a movie for them as well. Director Sean Levy increased his difficulty level by having actual gamers cast in the movie. Uh, I think it all comes back to the director actually caring. He was very respectful, asked opinions, listened to those opinions and incorporated those opinions. I didn't expect it to hit as much as it was going to. I mean, like I knew it was gonna be great, right? But then when you, when, to, to see the final product and, and, to, and to literally be like, oh my God, it's a perfect translation. This whole good guy routine is ruining the game. Terminator. I think making a game specifically for the movie and then building all your rules around that, obviously taking influence from games in real life and kind of Putting little Easter eggs here and there is great, but the fact that they made their own game, they just have whatever limits they want then. They don't have to cater to a fan base of a game that doesn't exist. I know this world is just a game, but this place, these people, that's all I have. So I'm not gonna be the good guy. Thanks, guy. I'm gonna be the great guy. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Thoughts? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm so <laughs> All right. I'll, go, I'll, I'll probably see it. I don't think so. Okay. 824, 78 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a San Antonio man is sent to the hospital with severe burns to his body overnight. What we know about the incident and the victim's condition. Plus, we're following up with that deadly bar shooting over on the east side. Our Dylan Collier joining us live with the latest details. That's next. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, August 15th. Some of our viewers, their mm -hmm. children, it's the last day of summer before a lot of school districts start tomorrow. Sarah, and I know that if they wanted to do some, like maybe pool time or outdoor activity, do it earlier in the day. Yeah, that's great advice there, Sarah, because this afternoon we are expecting there to be some scattered showers and thunderstorms around San Antonio in the metro area. Scattered being the key word there. Unfortunately, it's not going to rain everywhere today, but there's a chance for rain today. And in fact, we can see that rain right now working its way across uh, northern parts of the hill country. Uh, but it is a weakening complex. Earlier, it produced some severe thunderstorm warnings up just near San Angelo. Uh, but as you can see right now, there still is a flash flood warning in place for Tom Green County. Uh, but this uh, broken line of thunderstorms, this complex is heading south. It'll be near Sonora and in Kimball County here very shortly. Uh, so again, throughout the day today, this is going to generate outflow boundaries, which in turn is going to fire off a few showers and storms in the hill country and in the metro area, mainly this afternoon. So looking at storm chances for today again over the next few hours, rain is is not going to be around San Antonio again. It's the afternoon that will have a 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms. And so coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about uh, what you can expect as far as rainfall goes today. Now, 
Outside, it is mostly cloudy. We've got a good mix of low level and high level clouds, 79 degrees, and it's humid. Dew points are in the mid 70s, and so we already have a heat index this morning. It feels like it's in the low 80s, and it is actually in the low 80s. It's Stinson, 81 degrees. It's Stinson this morning, 74 in Kerrville. In New Brunfels, it's 77. It's 74 in Seguin, 76 at Port SA, 78 in Gonzales, and 78 down in Pleasanton. So as I mentioned today in the forecast, we're going to talk about our scattered rain chance this afternoon. Sarah was just talking about how a lot of school districts are headed back to school tomorrow. I'll tell you what you can expect for the drop off in the pickup and we'll take a check in the tropics. We're going to want to be paying attention to Tropical Storm Grace, which is currently near Puerto Rico uh, for its track later on in the later part of this week. So a lot to unpack in the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A fight inside an east side bar around 3.30 this morning leads to five people being shot. Two of those victims we now know have died. Three others in critical condition. Our Dylan Collier live at the scene as investigators wrap up their initial investigation. Good morning, Dylan. Good morning. We are outside the Boom Boom Sports Bar on South New Braunfels in Westfall, about a block from Interstate 10. San Antonio police who responded here early this morning found evidence both inside and outside the bar in its parking lot. Police officials have described this as a fight inside that escalated into a deadly situation. At least one of the victims who died was found just outside this establishment in a grassy area. And it's still a little, a little early on in the investigation. I don't know um, if they were already outside or, or he was, uh, you know, the gunman started shooting them as they came out. It's still early on. At last check, the three other victims were taken to Brook Army Medical Center, all of them in critical condition. The search for a suspect or suspects potentially continues this morning. We are live on the east side. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. Also new this morning, a man is sent to the hospital with burns to his body following an overnight house fire just west of downtown. San Antonio fire crews say it happened at a home in the 100 block of Jean Street around 145 this morning. They say the homeowner tried to extinguish a small fire in the living room, but it quickly got out of control and he was burned. He was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Firefighters were able to get control of the fire quickly. Damages are estimated to be around $2,000. The cause remains under investigation. A young father and street pastor remember during a special tribute at his northeast side apartment complex. That man, 22 year old Troy Demetrius Lee, died after being stabbed multiple times back in June. San Antonio police found his body near a bus stop in front of his apartment complex, which is the Hilltop Oaks Apartments. During the tribute, people shared his love for God, his passion for impacting others. He and his girlfriend, Lindell, have a six year old. She's pregnant with another baby that is due any day now. She says she has peace knowing he is still with them. He's, he's still here in our hearts, and we may not have him here physically, but he's still here spiritually. San Antonio police put a Crime Stoppers alert out for the suspect who is still at large. So if you have any information that can help in the case, you are asked to call 210-224-STOP. Your morning headlines over 300 people are dead and at least 1800 are injured in Haiti following a powerful magnitude 7.2 earthquake. Yesterday's quake sent people of the Caribbean island rushing to the streets to seek safety and to help rescue those trapped in the rubble. The earthquake struck the country's southwestern area. There are now fears the widespread damage will worsen over the next week with tropical storm Grace predict predicted to reach the area. And a warehouse where fuel was illegally stored has exploded in northern Lebanon, killing 20 people, wounding dozens more with severe burns. And not exactly clear what caused the explosion near the border with Syria. Smuggling operations has been going on for months along that border amid severe fuel shortages in the crisis hit nation. A Lebanese military official says there was about 60,000 liters of gas being stored there. Now to the view from Washington on the chaotic situation in Afghanistan with the Taliban seizing more cities and just on the doorset of Kabul and more American troops heading to the country. Now, since this report, we know that they have entered Kabul. They're actually talking to the head of the country, negotiating, trying to take over the country as a whole. ABC's Alex Prashay at the White House with more. 
This weekend, we've seen President Biden continuing to defend the drawdown, writing in a statement, one more year or five more years of U.S. military presence would not have made a difference if the Afghan military cannot or will not hold its own country. Now, Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with Afghan President Ghani yesterday offering support. But in advance of the Taliban reaching the presidential palace, Blinken also spoke with Ghani's chief political rival, uh, who's led negotiations with the Taliban. Now, here at home, Republicans continue to criticize the drawdown. Mike Rogers, the ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, writing, unfortunately, I believe the worst is yet to come. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell urged Biden to consider using airstrikes to stop the Taliban advance towards Kabul. Biden firing back, saying he inherited a deal cut by his predecessor. And as this drawdown continues, Biden's also out with a warning to the Taliban, saying that any action against U.S. personnel during this mission will be met with a swift and strong response. It's important to mention, though, the Taliban have reached Kabul, and there are much more up-to-date stories right now at KSAT.com. In your health headlines, smoke from western wildfires could be making COVID worse in California, Oregon, and Washington State. According to a new report in the journal Science Advances, researchers say the wildfire smoke and soot in 2020 led to a surge in COVID cases and deaths. Experts say that's because the fine particulate matter found in smoke and air pollution can spread the virus even faster. They hope their research will help prove how climate change in the form of a wildfire is creating a growing emergency for human health. In your health headlines, new research also suggests a COVID-19 vaccine might not adequately protect cancer patients against the coronavirus. Two studies published in the journal JAMA Oncology found cancer patients were less likely to develop COVID-19 antibodies. In another study, 160 patients with blood cancers who received the vaccine, three ended up getting infected with the virus, one person died. A separate study from Israel resulted in similar findings. Researchers there found COVID-19 antibodies were significantly lower among cancer patients five and a half weeks after their second dose of a COVID-19 vaccine compared to non-cancer patients. Now, there's no clear-cut evidence that the Delta variant is causing more severe disease in children, but Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's putting more kids in the hospital. So what activities should your family avoid to lower the risk of your young child getting COVID? CNN's Mandy Gaither has more in today's Health Minute. The Delta variant continues to quickly spread across the U.S., but right now the youngest Americans can't get the best protection there is, a vaccine. The only thing we know for sure is that more infections mean more children will be in the hospital. For those under 12 not yet eligible for vaccination, top U.S. health officials continue to say masking and physical distancing are key. What you do beyond that depends on your child's risk factors. I would probably not have any of my kids who are still too young to be vaccinated go to one of those big sleepovers where you have multiple, you know, five, six kids. But Dr. Perry Wilson with the Yale School of Medicine says a one-on-one -on -one slumber party may be more manageable, just mixing two households. And the biggest co COVID risk for kids under 12 who aren't vaccinated, the same as it is for unvaccinated adults. Those are indoor crowded activities where people aren't wearing masks. Wilson says outdoor activities are relatively safe, but if you're packing indoors because you want that air conditioning or when the weather gets colder, if you're packing indoors to get the heat, that's when the risk of transmission is going to be high. And if you feel any COVID-19 symptoms, regardless of vaccination status, Wilson says to get tested. Especially if you're living with unvaccinated people because you, you'll be fine, but you might be putting them at risk. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Each year, silver roses in honor of Arleta Guadalupe are stewarded by the Knights of Columbus Council among routes from Canada to the U.S. to Mexico. And this year, a silver rose made the pilgrimage through San Antonio. It arrived at San Juan de los Lagos Catholic Church yesterday. Now parishioners will be able to view the Silver Rose during Mass today. The next Masses are scheduled for 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and noon. Again, that is at San Juan de los Lagos Catholic Church. It's on 3231 El Paso Street. We have all this information available right now on KSAT.com. Well, big news into the newsroom, some upsetting news. Uh, we now know that uh, the city manager, Eric Walsh, will not be able to join us this morning. So... If you do have any questions about the budget, I know RJ Marquez did a phenomenal breakdown, a great explanation of everything that goes into it, some of the reasoning behind it. Just head to ksat.com. All we can say is we hope everything's okay. Yeah. All right.
Time now, just about 840, 79 degrees out. Well, Tejanos facing difficult choices for Texas independence. After the break, we are wrapping up our latest Tejano Moment series. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 79 degrees now, but we are really in the thick of the summer heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. Well, this week in our Tejano Moment series, we've been learning about Colonel Francisco Ruiz and how he helped lead Texas to independence. But the path to independence came with some difficult choices that the Colonel was forced to make. It also put him on an execution list by the Mexican government. GMSA producer Rosalyn Jimenez has the details. In 1828, about seven years after returning from Louisiana, Lieutenant Colonel Francisco Ruiz took on a new military role. He commanded the San Carlos de las Parras Light Cavalry in San Antonio, fighting off natives and outlaws. Later, he established a new military post on the upper Brazos River. In a military career for him at that time period, it was one of the highest, uh, uh, was certainly as a lieutenant colonel, uh, and then that command, I think it was desirable. The attacks were overwhelming and a lack of reinforcements forced him and his troops to come back to Bear County. Ruiz commanded until 1835 when his age and health caught up to him, but he still led in other ways. The other part of, of uh, what he's able to provide is his, uh, his presence uh, and representing uh, the men and women from the Bear County area, if you will, Beja, uh, at the Revolutionary Congress, the, uh, Washington on the Brazos. He and other Tejano leaders wrote a Bill of Rights demanding equitable representation, taxation, and military protection. However, their demands went unanswered by President Santa Ana, forcing Tejanos to make the difficult decision of fighting or remaining loyal to Mexico. So they fought, Ruiz doing his part by signing the Texas Declaration of Independence at the Convention of 1836. He and his nephew, uh, Don Jose Antonio Navarro, are chosen to go and represent the people from literally South Texas. As a result, they both became part of an execution list for treason to Mexico. Ultimately, Santa Ana's army was defeated on March 6, 1836 at the Battle of San Jacinto. Colonel Ruiz passed away a few years later in 1840. He is buried at San Fernando Cemetery No. 1, and his gravesite bears a 1936 Texas Centennial Tombstone awarded by the state of Texas. Rosalyn Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. If you didn't catch the first two parts, you can catch them right now on KSAT.com. All right, time now, 846, 79 degrees out. Sarah Spivey, we know a lot of kids starting the first day of class tomorrow. What can they expect? Well, I've got a back to school forecast coming up Boom. for uh, tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of districts starting school tomorrow. First, though, I want to talk about our quote, cool-ish summer. No summer in San Antonio is cool, but we have seen uh, so many days that are either at or below average. In fact, anywhere you see a blue square or a yellow square, that is a day that is at or below average. We have had 40 days at or below average. That's about 88% of all of the days so far have been cooler or uh, right at average. And in fact, the warmest part of this year has been this past week when we were a couple of degrees above the average temperature for a few days. Now, the reason why, of course, we have seen uh, the uh, cooler than average uh, July and August is because of the rain we've seen. And we've got a chance for rain today. Now, it doesn't come until the afternoon and it's only a 40 to 50% chance, but the chance is there to see scattered showers and a few thunder showers as well. This afternoon, there could be wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour, a few flashes of lightning and heavy downpours at times, but Severe weather is not anticipated today. 77 degrees in New Braunfels at 75 in Hondo, 75 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 74 in Comfort, 81 already at Stinson and 76 at JBSA Randolph, already 81 in Del Rio as well and it's 78 in Catula. But just to our north, we're seeing a complex of thunderstorms uh, that has been slowly, slowly moving to the south. And it'll get a little bit of a pace throughout the rest of the uh, day here. Uh, but we're expecting the outflow boundary from these showers and storms to reach us here in San Antonio in the afternoon. And that's why we have a chance for scattered showers and storms. So let me take you through the future cast. This is right at about noon. You can see we'll have isolated to widely scattered showers 
showers in the area, about a 20 to 30 percent chance. And then in the afternoon, a 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. Now, even if you don't get rain and there is a possibility that you will not get rain today, we're going to have some rain cooled air in the area. So high temperatures should be in the low 90s, a few degrees cooler than the last couple of days. But unfortunately for areas like Catula, Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass, chance for rain a lot less and their temperatures should be in the upper 90s today for the high. Here's that back to school forecast. Alamo Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Judson, NEISD and Southside ISD all going to start school tomorrow in the morning. It'll be muggy with some clouds and then again tomorrow afternoon we have a chance for scattered showers and storms a little bit less of a chance, but a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. Now normally I'd give a rain chance in the summer an A plus for the afternoon forecast, but because we're going to have some kids trying to get home, it's down to a B. Uh, but uh, again, it's good to have a chance for rain in the summer. Now let's talk about the tropics. We've got two systems out there right now in the Atlantic. First, Tropical Storm Fred in the Gulf of Mexico. It is expected to make landfall along the Florida Panhandle overnight Monday into Tuesday. That green area there, that is a Tropical Storm Watch. Now we will not see any direct effects from Tropical Storm Fred. However, Tropical Storm Grace remains a bit of a mystery until late next week. Now, what we do know with Tropical Storm Grace is that it's impacting Puerto Rico right now, Dominican Republic under a Tropical Storm warning, and parts of Haiti are under a Tropical Storm watch at the moment. Now, it's going to be moving across Hispaniola Monday into Tuesday. Thankfully, likely missing the area of Haiti that was hit by that very large earthquake yesterday, uh, but it's going to be moving over Cuba, perhaps falling apart, but then some forecast models also have it strengthening in the Gulf of Mexico by late this week, and there is a large amount of uncertainty. If Grace can maintain its strength, it could land anywhere from Mexico all the way up to Florida. That is a lot of uncertainty, and so we'll continue to keep you updated as we get more of an information for that. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast, though. The most immediate thing to think about is the 50% chance for scattered showers and storms this afternoon. Scattered rain tomorrow as well. And we'll be looking at highs in the mid to upper 90s for most of this week. Well, I was going to ask you guys, first day of school, mm -hmm. did you like it when your parents took those pictures? Or were you like, no, I'm not mm. playing. I'm going to frown. I always loved when people took pictures. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm making a joke, um, but yeah, I still haven't gotten the pollen count in yet, by the way. So we'll have an update on that as well on KSAT.com. But did you like taking the picture? Yeah, I did. How about you? So I used to hate taking the pictures, but now I realize in retrospect, kids, I know it's frustrating in the moment, but they're good memories and you get to see the progression. What about you? I, no, I've never liked pictures. No, I still <laughs> to this day, 851, 79 degrees out. Well, cryptocurrency, not knowing exactly what it is, is costing amateur investors a lot of money. That's tomorrow on GMSA Cryptocurrency Cons. More gun violence overnight, this time at an east side bar. Five people shot, two of them killed after a fight inside the Boom Boom Sports Bar spilled into the parking lot. This happened just before 3.30 at the corner of South New Braunfels and Westfall on the east side. At last check, no suspect in custody. We are also told those three other victims are all in critical condition at an area hospital. Reporting on the east side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Here you can see our rain chance in parts of the northern hill country right now. A good complex of thunder showers pushing to the south. Now this will be moving into the hill country within the next about two hours or so. And here in San Antonio, our chance for rain is this afternoon. 40 to 50 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. We'll be monitoring for the potential for some minor flooding issues from some of the heavier bands that set up. But again, not everyone will see rain today, unfortunately. But if you do get rain, that's some good news. It's August after all. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great Sunday.